who lost their dear ones. And also pray for those who are wounded and still in various hospitals. My role is to introduce the principles and to invite the Honorable Stephen Kalonzo Msioka to make our address. He has a formal statement that we'll be reading shortly. But today we are truly honored and we want to thank the clergy for being able to organize this fellowship here and also for coming out. We know there are very many who have been intimidated. For you to gather the courage and come here on this cold uh, day to be with us and to fellowship is an act of courage. We want to thank you all. And also thank His Excellency Stephen Kalonzo Msioka because as uh, Opio and I have said, even convening prayers in this country is becoming a problem. Kenya is becoming a police state where obvious rights, the right of association, freedom of assembly, freedom of picketing are being limited. We have a problem in our country. And that is why today we are truly honored to have with us the fourth president of the Republic of Kenya, His Excellency Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta. This is a man who has been our president for 10 years and a man who saw the transformation of this country and who saw the need to set the feet of this nation on the path of healing and reconciliation and the path of unity. They say when there's a crisis, the wise men build bridges. The fools build walls. They build dams. They cause division. But today we are truly honored to have our fourth president here who through his handshake with his brother Raila Molo Odinga united this country. And who has gone through a lot. We have all witnessed as Kenyans his property being raided. His ship being carried away. His mother being harassed. And just a few days ago, his son Jomo being raided at night. Indeed, I want to agree with what Suba Churchill has said here today. To harass a man who has led this country for 10 years and who has been a head of state in the manner that Uhuru Kenyatta is being harassed is a problem, not just for Uhuru Kenyatta, it's a problem for all of us and the region. So today we want to say those who have chosen the path of vengeance, the path of vindictiveness, we want to say to them, you cannot lead a country through vengeance. The Bible says, vengeance is mine, that says the Lord. You cannot lead a country through vindictiveness. And that is why we are here to pray for them. Today also, we are here with our leader, the Azmio leader, the Right Honorable Raila Molo Dinga, the second Prime Minister of the Republic of Kenya. Sema Baba. He is here with us. He has gone through a lot. Bullets have been aimed at him. Assassination plots have been planned against him. But today, he stands here with us. Not cowed. He's a man who's been through the struggle. And he's a man who would go, who would march into hell for a heavenly cause. Today we celebrate him even as we pray with the country. We want to pray for him. Our leader. Raila Molodinga. Today also we are here with the 10th Vice President of the Republic of Kenya. His Excellency Stephen Kalonzo Msioka. Your Excellency, we want to thank you. If it wasn't for your courage to provide this venue today, there were all attempts to ensure that even these prayers don't take place to pray for the affected families. We are here today also with the first governor of Muranga, His Excellency Wairia, who is also the party leader of Usawa Party. We want to thank you, Governor Wairia, for standing in solidarity in the struggle. It has not been easy. We are here also 
with the chair of the National Executive Council of Azimio, the first governor of Kakamega County and the chair of COG, my brother Wycliffe Ambetsa Oparanya. You have been steady. Besides Baba, we want to appreciate your role and your efforts, my brother Wycliffe Ambetsa Oparanya. The SG of Jubilee, my brother Jeremiah Kioni, Wamaduvuria, you have struggled. Umevasufuria, you have fought for Jubilee, and we are still saying this. Jubilee is Azimio, and Azimio is Jubilee. We will never give in to what they are trying to do to dismember our, uh, our parties. We want to thank also the COOP. Leader is here, my brother, Pongezi Kwakua Hapa, na viongozi wetu, Bungeni, Mepambana, Vilivio, na tuseme asanteni nyote kwa kuja. And for those who are celebrating the good work of the police, today we have shown the world what the police have done in the last few weeks and few days. This is not something to be celebrated. We brought a new constitution so that we stop the police force and turn it into a police service. Under Article 244 of our Constitution, the police are supposed to be a service. They are supposed to look after the people, not to terrorize the people of Kenya. And they are supposed to do so in a way that respects human rights under Article 244. The police do not have a free license to shoot and kill. Under Section 61 of the National Police Service Act, the only instances when the police are threatened and have to defend themselves or save lives, that is when they are supposed to use their guns. All those killed, you have seen their pictures. These are not statistics. These are people, many of them young people. My brother, Professor Wajakoe, could have been here with us, but today as we speak, he is receiving the body of a young man, Meshach Shireka, one of the 30 people, the names you have seen here today. Professor Wajako is in Kakamega receiving that body, and tomorrow we will be joining him for that burial. So we say, Pole to all of you, and we say, Wale wanasema walisimamisha rege, BBI. Na leo wanasema watasimamisha maandamano. We want to say to them, BBI was a proposal. Article 37 is part of the constitution of Kenya. You cannot stop what is provided for in the constitution of Kenya. Ndugu Kalonzo Msioka, please come and give our formal statement. And to all those who are affected, please let's pray for them as we launch the fund to support the family.